What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm doing something that I have never done on my channel. I'm gonna be reacting to my very first IVF journey video. It has been one year since I uploaded that video and decided to share our journey with the world and sort of kind of like set myself free of this weight that infertility has put on me. And so I am going to be watching this video for the very first time. I have not watched it since uploading it just over a year ago and I feel like this is gonna be a very healing experience. If you guys are not already following me on Instagram, you know that I'm very open about the fact that I am seeing a grief counselor. I decided to do that after our first miscarriage and so it has been a very, very big help in this healing journey and one thing I learned about grief and healing is that the best thing that you can do to help move through your grief and heal is to move through the situation and live through it again. So I think this is going to be very interesting. Plus I would love to give you guys some like background details or things I never shared before. So if you guys would like to see my reaction to my first IVF journey, then keep on watching because we're gonna get started. All right, so this is the first time that I'm watching this video in over a year. And before we get into it, I cannot remember if I mentioned, I'm sure I did in this video, but this video was originally filmed to be a pregnancy announcement. So we were not going to tell anybody about our fertility journey. I don't really know why at the time. I think that's just what we were comfortable with and that's totally fine. And obviously that did not end up turning out that way as you guys have probably seen. If you've not already watched this video, I highly recommend to go watch this first before watching my reaction. I'm going to leave the link down below in the bio or the description. But yeah, this was meant to be a pregnancy announcement and it did not turn out that way and so at the end of our failed cycle i was left with all this footage and nothing to do with it so what i ended up doing was using this as a way to tell everyone we're struggling with infertility so that's the way and it just kind of snowballed into this big thing and i'm just really glad that i shared my journey and i really recommend that if you are going through infertility or struggling with infertility to open up whether it's to one person or a thousand people or whoever it is whatever feels right for you but opening up about my journey has been the most freeing thing i've ever done all right so let let's begin i'm so freaking nervous okay Ooh, I have like chills watching this. <sighs> Is it weird that I'm like tearing up watching this like already? Like I just remember all the emotions going through all that. Okay, so I'm already tearing up just like watching all of that. Like I just remember every little moment that went through and like that was such a big experience and it feels like it happened like years ago, but it was only about a year and some change months ago, but it feels like so long ago, but so crazy already. Just so I feel like I'm probably going to cry watching this honestly, but okay. Um, also, this video was really, really hard for me to make. I had just... I think it had only been about a month since our failed transfer and um, I had not grieved it. I actually just recently grieved it. And um, a side note for those of you who are going through infertility and if you have a failed IVF transfer or IUI, that is also a grief period. That is something that I didn't really realize. So you do have to go through a grief cycle with that. And I hadn't done that yet. So this was sort of a way to do that. But let me tell you, editing this video, I cried a lot. <laughs> if you didn't know, if you weren't Okay, sorry to interrupt, but I can hear 
This is something I learned in therapy. I can hear the pain and emotion in my throat. Like I'm not letting myself release it yet in this video and I can hear it. So I can see that I have not properly grieved this yet. On Instagram, um, I shared that I went through my first round of IVF. So I've been going on this crazy fertility journey with my husband. I wanted to share my journey on here today because I feel like infertility is so isolating and it's lonely and until you open up to someone or you talk about it's so weird because I can like feel my pain in this video even though like even right now I'm getting choked up thinking about it but like I feel so sad and I just want to hug myself and uh, it's so sad watching it. What you're going through, you don't realize how big of a community that it actually is. When I shared my story on Instagram, I was so grateful for the amount of people who, I don't know how I'm gonna make it to this video. I was so grateful for the outpouring of love and um, it just meant so much to me because I had been kind of hiding that part of my life while the rest of my life i was putting on camera and pretending like everything was fine so a side note um i don't want to interrupt too much of this video but um me talking about opening opening up and like sharing my journey with people you the moment you open up will not believe the amount of support you are going to get from women who you never in a million years knew was struggling or maybe they were and you just they happen to find your account but the outpouring of love and i am not joking with you guys how big this community is is insane like this community is everything that you need when you're struggling with infertility. This is by far, honestly, opening up was the best thing I ever did. And so like, I 100% agree with myself in this video of like, it is crazy the amount of support you will get when you just live your truth. Um, I wanted to share this story today because I know that there are other people out there who are suffering and I just want them to know that you're not alone in this journey, that there are so many people going through this as well. I have a whole vlog that I'm gonna show you of my journey, of what I went through the past few months. It is very intimate footage, but it's very important. I think a lot of people, when they hear you're going through fertility treatments, they automatically assume it's a one and done procedure. That's not the case. It's months of different hormones, different injections. All right, we can skip through this. Like, I don't have to explain this to everybody. Okay, ah, okay, I think here it is. All right. So, <laughs> I just got this gigantic box. If you can see that. Full of all okay. the medication. Story time about this box of medication so for those of you who've never gone through ivf this box of medication was so expensive and it was a price that i had no idea was coming and so when we were going before you can even move forward with your ivf journey you have to pay for your medication and your nurses and the staff at the ivf clinic have to have proof that you've purchased everything because they need to know that you've got it all up front so that with each step that you work through you're ready to move on you have the medication so i did not realize how expensive this medication was going to be and our insurance covered a lot but i think at this point we had not met our deductible this medication out of pocket was around three to four thousand dollars it was the biggest shock to us we could not believe how expensive and the insurance agent was so rude on the phone when we were trying to figure out like how much money this is going to be and like you know what do we need to pay this lady was like oh wow oh yeah oh that's expensive and we're like yeah like we don't already know that like just keep your comments to yourself that i'm mm, gonna be taking hopefully my in the next <laughs> few weeks of IVF. This is so oh, much medication. So much. And you don't end up using it all, by I the way? I can't even believe this. This box it has to be, I mean, it's huge and it's full to the brim. All right, so here they are out of the box. A few of them are in the fridge because I guess I need to be refrigerated, but this is all going into my body <laughs> within the next few weeks. We spent the weekend painting for the future mm. baby room. 
It's a little premature, but this room actually had to get done anyway. It was a really ugly peachy so color. A fun fact is that I'm actually sitting in that room right now. Uh, it never ended up being a baby room, which is unfortunate. Um, but it has now become my office slash like wellness studio. So I've made something really good in this room. I do my meditation, my yoga, my manifestation, all of that. This is like my sacred space. So looking back, it's like kind of sad that I was preparing it for a baby, but this has actually become like my like serene room now that, you know, we're still not pregnant. So Dom painted the walls and then I did all the built-in shelves, which and then also, um, this room was like abandoned in our house. <laughs> like we have, it's just the two of us. We have four bedroom house and this room was upstairs and we just never went inside of it. Like never really went in there. And so we left it sort of undone until we were getting ready to have a baby. So we thought like, let's paint it before I'm pregnant. And then once I'm pregnant, I don't have to worry about it. It's just like getting this room together. So today is October 8th and yesterday I had my- All right, so I want to pause this part of the video because I think this is really important. So when I was doing IVF, I didn't realize how common what I'm telling you in this video that I have to do is. Um, so many women get it done. I thought it meant that there was something wrong with me uh, and I mean, I guess technically that's the case, but it's such a normal thing to get done that when I was going through this, I was just shattered. I was like, oh my God, there's something so wrong. And I literally cried all day the day before filming this. Like I was a wreck and I thought it was the end of the world. And this is why I say when you're going through IVF, have so much patience and just trust the process because in the end it works out. Um, but yeah, I was, I didn't understand what it meant to go have to have surgery and basically I had to get a hysteroscopy which just was uh, preparing my uterus for a implantation so I they got rid of if there was any scar tissue or looked around to see if there were any polyps or fibroids or anything like that and it all works out good it's a very common surgery but I was a wreck we done because there's something wrong there's nothing and wrong I had it's no okay. idea like literally <laughs> just no idea. Like, you're fine I've it's okay never had any hunch or feeling at, at all that, that anything was wrong so apparently when he was doing the ultrasound and i could see it as well i possibly i have signs that i have endometriosis which i am shocked i've never had a symptom i don't have so also to say when we're talking about endometriosis um i've never been officially diagnosed they did find some scar tissue but I mean, I never did like a laparoscopy, so I don't know fully, but I mean, it's okay. It's very common to get this surgery. So I feel bad putting this in there. And a lot of people are like, wait, but that's happening to me too. And it's like, girl, it is so common. Trust me. Uh, okay, so here come the ejections. <laughs> okay. This is the very first time I ever did an injection on my body. And I, the amount of fear you have, like actually just going in and sticking it in your skin yourself. Oh my gosh, it was so difficult to just get past that like mind game. Cause like once you do it, then it becomes routine every day as you're gonna see. But it took me, I mean, at least a half an hour or so to do this, but um, I love that my husband was there, like, cheering me on. Babe, I'm gonna cry. And she said, flick your wrist. <laughs> Just be careful in case I pass out, okay? I was serious yeah, about that. I, I was worried. <laughs> so I thought I could, but I don't know. Okay. This is just proof you that you are you so much stronger that than you life. think you are. <laughs> oh my god, okay. <laughs> we gotta stop. It's gonna take two hours yeah. to do this. Try to do it, like, straight. Right? Yeah, like that, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Sorry, I almost did it and then I, I see stuff coming out. I feel like I gotta do it. I'm sorry, this is like way it's harder okay, than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you scared something? Well, you're not gonna be able to do it either. <laughs> I hate this. 
My camera's gonna die before I get this yeah. done. That moment, oh, weight lifted. But it does burn going in, so that's why I'm like breathing really hard. I'm like, ooh, this kind of hurts. <laughs> Oh, I did it. Yeah. Is that zero? Is that zero? You did it, babe. Oh, it burns. It. The first of many. <laughs> okay, I did it. Oh, this makes me so emotional. Okay, wow. <laughs> that part makes me so emotional because I don't know, it's like seeing your own strength. Oh my gosh, I did not expect to cry here. Seeing your own strength on camera is like, whoa. It's like, I'm so proud of myself watching that. Holy crap. So I didn't film every, and oh my gosh, I'm like, Oh my gosh. I didn't film every injection. Um, sometimes I just had to do them like so early in the morning that I was like, I have to go to, I was too tired, you know? So um, I didn't film every single one, but more than likely I was doing two per day. Oh my God, I'm crying. I did not expect to feel that way. I feel very proud of myself watching that, seeing the strength that I had and what I was willing to do to get pregnant, but wow. Holy crap, I did not think I was gonna cry to that. <laughs> okay. Good morning. So oh, yeah. yesterday was my egg retrieval. So I, before we get into the egg retrieval, I um, had to do a trigger shot the 48 hours or so before or so, so many hours before my egg retrieval, and I was I was terrified of it, and it, it had to be timed at a very specific time. I think it was, my trigger shot, luckily, was at like 11.30 at night. It all just depends on your body. Uh, some people's are at like 3 a.m. and they have to get up, but I was so terrified because it was the first one that had to go in my back, and my husband had to do it, and it's a much bigger injection. It's a little bit scarier, and I was just so nervous that I didn't film it. I was so freaking terrified and people don't mention, I didn't film any of this, but I was in so much pain with my um, stimulation with how big my ovaries were because you're going to see how many eggs I get and you'll see why they were so large. But I was in so much pain that I was like, I don't even care about filming. I just want to get this part done with. So I did not film any of that and I didn't film the car ride or anything to the retrieval. I was The retrieval was definitely the most painful part of everything. And... Um... I just haven't been feeling very good. I've had, I'm having a migraine since like So you can see like how down I'm feeling. Um, after I do surgery, I typically get migraines the next day. Anesthesia does that to me for some reason. But I was also in so much pain. I had 21 eggs retrieved. I'm gonna talk about that soon, I think. Um, and that's a lot of pressure to be relieved off your ovaries. So I could like not stand up straight for like 48 hours or so. I was in a lot of pain here. I felt miserable. And I wish my husband was could have stayed home with me that day because I was just in so much pain. Last night, I think it's just from the anesthesia and all the medication they give you. I'm just really having a bad <laughs> migraine. Um, there's, it's really hard for me to walk since I got home yesterday. Just like all the cramping and there's like a lot of pressure after they remove your eggs. Um, so I've just not been, not been feeling good at all. But on the other hand, I'm really excited because they were able to retrieve 23 eggs which is oh, 23 like and i thought it was 21 good number that's a so lot I'm of really eggs holy crap that. i've been saying 21 i think 15 is what they aim for and i was able to get 23 23 so i'm really happy that's so and good and i'm just waiting for a call to find out how many were mature enough and 
I think 21 must have been um, mature enough then. How many got fertilized? That must be what it was. Because they did the actual ICSI, which is Wee. where they put, they physically put a sperm into the egg and they take like the best sperm of the sample. So today we find out how many fertilize and then I think within the next few days, we find out uh, the grade of each embryo, so we'll know. So, mm, the thing about that, so we end up finding how many fertilized that day. They never called me and told me, like, what the grade of all the embryos were or how many embryos we got until we got to the clinic. So, there was a lot of stress that week because I was... I, I was waiting on a call, like, every single day to find out, well, how many embryos did we get? You know, how are they doing? And I wasn't getting a call. And I was so worried that they were going to be like, oh, we got no embryos. And that would have been devastating. It happens a lot to a lot of people. I was worried that's what they were going to say. But then they ended up booking the transfer, which tells me like, well, somebody made it to the end, you know? But I remember that week being a big ball of stress. All right, let's skip ahead. So later on, I get the call. So it's still Monday. It's only been a few hours since I last. And you can like, see I'm feeling in. much better. I'm still in bed. I'm still trying to recover from surgery and just not feeling 100% yet. But I did just get a call from our nurse and they let me know that out of the 23 eggs that they retrieved yesterday, that 20 of them were um, mature enough to attempt fertilization and then 15 of those mature eggs fertilized. So this is an insane so i was really excited about this i think we ended up getting nine embryos that made it to day five meaning that they could either freeze them or transfer them and in this one we were doing a fresh transfer so basically i'm just explaining how excited i am and like this this was the moment that i was like oh my gosh we're gonna get pregnant and we were gonna put two embryos in so i was like oh my gosh we're gonna have twins so this was like a very happy moment for us for sure so let's skip ahead in this video because i talk quite a bit so I think after the last footage of the vlog was going to be doing my transfer that week and basically what they do is after they take the eggs out and they see how many fertilize, then they grow them for three to five days in the lab and we were doing a five day transfer. It was a fresh transfer, not frozen, meaning like none of them were ever frozen. So they just grew them in the lab and we ended up getting nine perfect embryos oh. out of it, which is really good. We ended up transferring two. Those were our two embryos. Very so perfect cute. embryos. This one. You will not, until you do IVF, you will not understand how beautiful, like how much you're going to love an embryo. Like it's crazy. I look at them and I'm like, oh, they're so cute. <laughs> up top is a 5AA and this I believe was a 4AA. Um, I think 6AA is the best. So we had some pretty good embryos and um, basically they, it's a very <sighs> quick process. It takes about five minutes. It was very intimate. Basically my husband got to be in the room with me and I laid on the table. So this process, I went into IVF thinking that um, it wasn't going to be as like like the same as when you just like naturally try to conceive and or that it wasn't going to be intimate or beautiful or anything like that i don't know um but it actually is one of the most beautiful and intimate experiences that we have a couple have ever like i can't explain it to you unless you've been through it like it sounds silly because it's like you're in a doctor's office and there's like five people around you putting embryos in, but it is the most still and quiet moment of your life. Like you're laying on a table, they give you Valium before and you're pretty relaxed and the nurses made me feel so comfortable even though I'm physically uncomfortable because my legs are spread open and but they make sure that you're comfortable. My husband was in there with me. And, you know, when the doctor comes in, everybody gets really quiet. It gets dark in there. And then they show you the embryos on the screen. So you can see that they are in the liquid that they're going to put in you. And, um, and then the embryologist brings them in. It's very quiet. Everybody's very still. And they just immediately put them in you. And then you can see them on the ultrasound screen. Then you lay there for 20 to 30 minutes, just you and your husband and looking at the screen. And it's just this beautiful moment of, 
oh my gosh, there are embryos that we made inside of me. And so that is by far one of the coolest moments I've ever experienced. Table and we got to see the embryos in a video, microscopic video, so we could see them on camera. And then we watched them transfer them into the room and then we got to watch them transfer them into my uterus, which this is a photo of it and they're somewhere in there. So they got to transfer, we got to watch them be transferred into my uterus and see them on camera and everything. And it was just a really nice experience for me and my husband and we kind of, and then we just, leave there for 30 minutes because they don't want you to move afterwards and and then we waited and um me being the very impatient person that i am i started testing for yes. pregnancy at three days past transfer which when you know there are embryos in you tell me how you don't test because this is different than just thinking you might be pregnant. There are embryos in you and you know they might implant. And I'd never been pregnant before, so I was testing, 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 testing every single day. Maybe eight days past ovulation. And of course I got a negative. And then I would test again the next day and I would get another negative. And then I just kept testing every single day. Why do and I see a line on one of them I, now that I look um, at that? That was weird. I think I went to get my blood test on 10 days past transfer. So by nine days past. So I tested for like every day almost since my transfer and they were all negative and I remember crying so hard the night before my blood test because from what I researched and what I understood you can pretty much tell if you're gonna have a positive blood test by then it's going to show up on a test um I mean tests can detect the smallest amounts of HCG and so the fact that it was negative I was just so crushed and I had to go in there knowing that this is probably going to be negative so that was really difficult. Transfer, all of my tests were negative and I kind of knew in my heart um, that it failed. So I feel like the worst part is going through all of that and yeah. um, having to go get your blood taken. And you, you know, and I know you can still get a positive blood test even if you have a negative pregnancy test. It's rare. That's such a really hard time for somebody who's gone through IVF or infertility stuff um because you do so much work and then for it not to work it's just such a punch in the gut like you know you work so hard to get these embryos and it's just so unfortunate and it's really heartbreaking and one thing I learned along this journey and I know I mentioned it earlier in the video but if you're going through fertility treatments and they fail your emotions and feelings about that are valid and if you're going you know you're going through a grieving process even though you didn't actually become pregnant you are still mourning the loss of the embryos that you worked so hard to create and that was something that was really hard for me to understand until I went to grief counseling is I realized like that was a process in itself that I never allowed myself to grieve so if you have lost embryos that because of a failed transfer or a failed IUI even, I mean, you have every right to grieve that loss, 100%. So I had to deal with this like grieving process. Oh my gosh, I'm such a sap right now. No, okay. I'm upset because I'm grieving and the fact that like I'm apologizing for being sad is just ridiculous to me. Um, Cause again, like I said, if you are going through any type of process like that seriously allow yourself to grieve allow your the tears to fall or the anger the resentment whatever it is let it happen let it flow through you and honestly like it's what you need to do nobody can tell you any differently and so even here i can see like i haven't properly grieved it i have now i've gotten through that that's obviously really hard to work through but i had to deal with this grieving process and that's where I've been. There's a lot of different steps of grieving with this. And I never fully um, grieved it until lost. last year, and a year later. It's just really hard to navigate. I've never experienced this before and they don't really prepare you for like what to expect when it doesn't work. Not really. So December no. was a difficult month for me and I know it was difficult. That's the thing like, I love the nurses and everything, but they don't prepare you enough for here's what's gonna happen and here's how you might feel if this fails. That's the hardest part. Like even with my miscarriage, like they were super, super nice. 
um, to me about my miscarriage and very sensitive, but no one ever really prepares you for like, well, what do you do after? You know, it's just, it's a lot to go through. For my husband too. I really had no motivation to do anything. I just felt mm -hmm. really lost. Which is a part of grief. I still kind of feel that way because I just, it's really hard to navigate through this, but I feel like it's important to talk about it because people are going through all yes. different kinds of struggles that you're not aware of unless they talk about it. And I feel like infertility is one of those things that people just don't talk about. And I, I'm seeing more and more people go through it and talk about it and that's wonderful, but it is hard. So Okay, so basically I just end this video saying like, hey, we're gonna try a second time. I think it was in the middle of my second cycle here and I had no idea what was to come, which is really sad, but <laughs> that's life. Um, but yeah, basically reiterating the fact that talking about it with other people who understand is the best thing that you can do. Opening up, sharing your story, finding that community, that is the best thing that you can do. So if you haven't done that already, I highly recommend reach out to me. I'm going to leave all my, you know, Instagram and all that stuff down below for you to DM me. I've met so many amazing, wonderful, strong, beautiful women through this journey just by opening up. It's been amazing. I'm so glad I did it, but yeah, so that's basically the end of this video. I don't think there was much else, um, but wow, walking through it, the one thing I did not expect me to feel was that pride in seeing how strong and I was during that, which is really cool to see. I feel this immense pride. I feel very strong. Ah, what a journey. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video with me. I know this was kind of a long one. I, I I don't know. I guess when I edit it, I'll find out. But thank you guys so much for watching this and staying along with my journey. If you guys are not already subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Emily Orlando. I share so much fertility things on there as well as TikTok. My TikTok is solely dedicated to fertility and miscarriage and IVF and all that good stuff. And listen to my podcast. I talk about fertility stuff on there as well. But thank you guys so much for supporting and loving this journey with me. And I will see you guys in my next video.